Uh, so for the kids, I need you at the end of the homily, not at the beginning. So if you'll hang on for just a moment. Uh, the adults, uh, perhaps you remember this is a continuation of the story, the gospel story from last week. Jesus had come home to Nazareth, his hometown, went to the synagogue, went to church, read a passage from the prophet Isaiah. And then, as you heard at the beginning of this reading, uh, the, the people, they're thinking this is pretty good. They are, you know, they're, they're, they're amazed at the gracious words that, that come from Jesus. They're impressed. But then, what, a paragraph later, they're ready to kill him. Literally ready to kill Jesus. They take him up onto the edge of this cliff where their town was and just want to throw him off. And it's just startling. Like, what happened? Why did this, why the shift and it's hard to know exactly, but it would appear to me that it all shifts when their focus changes. They're focused on Jesus and what Jesus is saying, and that seems to be good. And then they ask that question, isn't this the son of Joseph? Like, we know this guy. He grew up here. We know him. And I just wonder if the thought process is sort of going along like, well, why, is he, why is he such a, a big shot now? Like, like, who said he was any better than we are? Why, does, you know, why, why should we listen to him? He's just one of us. And Jesus sort of names it for them. You know, he says to them, hey, hey um, you're you're going to ask me to do for you what I did in Capernaum. Like, like you need proof. You need me to prove that I am, you know, the, this, this guy, and you're, you're not willing to accept it. And their focus is now solely on them. You know, who's he? Who's he to, to show off or whatever they think he's doing? And, and then... The conversation continues, and they just get angrier and angrier. It just seems to me that the problem, that, that what, what changes their, their mind is their focus. When they were focused on Jesus and what he was saying and the message from the prophet Isaiah, wow, that was great. In other words, they were focused on other people. But when they started focusing on themselves, started like their situation compared to Jesus, is, it was over. Now, you contrast that with uh, 1 Corinthians 13. That was the, the second reading. And some of you, by the way, um, would, I'm sure you recognized it. Some of you had that read at your wedding, which I think is terrific. But love is patient, love is kind, love is not boastful, it's not arrogant, it's not rude, it doesn't seek its own way. Paul's not talking about feelings, he's talking about choices. You choose to be kind, you choose to be not envious, not jealous, not, you choose to be patient. You, you choose all these things. Paul's saying, you know, that is, as he put it, the more excellent way. Or to put it in modern parlance, you want to be happy? Do that. But if you notice then that, that focus is all out. It's not about you. And so you end up with this really interesting contrast. You want to be the townspeople? You know... They start out okay, but they end up, it's all about us. It's all about us. And what do they end up with? Jesus walks away. And you have that versus Paul. You can choose. And you can choose to, to have the, you know, if you will, the arrow is pointing out. You can choose to be more interested in other people. You can choose to live your life for other people. Remember, that's how Jesus put it. You know, he who um, tries to hold on to his life, you're, you're, you're the, like the townspeople, it's about me. You hold on to your life. Jesus says, you'll lose it. But people that lose their life, that is, people who give their, their own life away, they will find life. Now, I'm hoping that you know people that are like this. 
It'll be sad if you know too many people that are, it's all about themselves, but I suspect we all, we've got those people in our, in our lives. We know these people. It's all about them, you know. Do you really want to be like that? Or do you want to be the person, and hopefully, again, you've met people that uh, they are living their life for other people. Like, that's, that's their focus. And you look at them and like, wow, who, you know, who's, who's doing the best? Even over the last two years, the pandemic. Who approached the pandemic? It's about me. You know, I need to go buy stuff at the store before someone else buys it because it, I, I, I need this stuff. Or do you, do you live your life for other people? And you say, well, I'll get what I need, but I'm not going not gonna, not gonna to get anything else. You know, how, do, how does that play out? When you're listening to the news, is it about me or is it about other people? That, that sort of thing. What happens here, though, is you get to this point where I think for most of us, I don't, I'm hoping, I can't imagine, anybody sitting here is going like, I want to be the greedy people, yeah. You know, like, you're, you're not going to do that. We all want to be here, but the question is, how do you get there? Because that, it's not a switch, I don't think. I don't think you can just, you know, say, uh, good point, you know, and then just turn a switch. I think you've got to have to kind of work your way there. And, and it's just a journey, one step at a time. You have to choose, as Paul says, you've got to choose it. One, one item at a time, one person at a time, one moment at a time. You've got to choose, I'm, I'm going to choose out rather than in. Now, I don't know what that looks like for you. I mean, I don't know where you are. You know, some of you, um, you know, maybe you're much more closer to the live of your life for others, and, and, and maybe there's lots of areas of your life where you're really good at that. Others, not so much, but, you know, I don't know where you are. I don't know what your next step would be. But I do have a suggestion for you, and this is where I need the kids. So, kids, if you don't, if your parents are, will let you, if they're okay with you doing this, you want to come up? Um, I got, uh, I need your help um, for... Um, offer a lesson to your, well, you too, I hope. Um. So uh, you know it's Catholic Schools Week, right? You know this, right? So it's this week where, I mean, in one sense you get the, you know, sort of, you know, dress out, have some fun, but the other part is we celebrate the fact that you get to go to Catholic school, and that is, you know, I, don't, I, I know it's not perfect, and, and maybe not every day is as good as they might be, but, you know, like, it's terrific. Uh, so I don't know if you know it, I got to teach at a high school, Catholic high school, for a long time, longer than you were alive, so um, I just think Catholic schools are great. But here's an idea for you. One of the ways that you can be focused on other people is to pray for them. So you already know a lot of these names, but the adults don't. So in, on the front page of the bulletin this week, we have listed the names of all the faculty and the staff at Sacred Heart and Morningstar. And what I'm asking them to do is to pray for all the teachers. But here's what I really want them to do, and this is where I need you to help. Um, the, um, you know, one way to do this is just, uh, dear Lord, please bless all the teachers at the schools. Amen. That's nice. I mean, I, you know, I think the good Lord would honor that. I just think it'd be really cool to pray for each teacher one name at a time. So, got a couple of these and I got some big rosaries and the idea is this. So you're not, you're not actually going to say a rosary. All you're going to do is you're going to hold on to a bead. And for those of you who go to the schools, this is easy. You just think of one of your teachers. Or started kindergarten. Just think of the kindergarten teacher. Just work your way up. So you hold on to the bead, close your eyes, picture the teacher. Or and for the adults who don't know the teachers, you're just going to look at that name, think of that name, pray for them. And then just go to the next bead and the next teacher. Maybe, you know, second grade. Just keep going. Just work your way along, nice and slow. Pray for those people, okay? Does that make sense? Would you do that? I mean, I, I, I just think that'd be really good for us, you and I, as we pray for other people. That's good for us. It keeps us focused out there, but mostly it'd be really great for the teachers, you know, that they, they, get, they get lots and lots of people praying for them today. So, um, what I have here, um, you can get these at the end of Mass. Uh, so there's some small ones, and then, of course, there's some 
big full rosary, so you can take which one. I'll stick them in the back on the table, but we need to bless these first. Can you hold those for me? All right. So this is the other thing you got to do. You can do this, right? The Lord blesses this. I'm just, I'm just sort of helping a bit uh, your prayers, okay? So you're going to pray with me? All right, ready? Pardon me, let me get my water here. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, so Father, we're just grateful for this lesson, a reminder that, yeah, we need, to, we need to keep our focus on other people. And so we pray that you help us to do that. And mostly, we pray that you help us do it this week just by praying for other people and using these, these rosaries, these beads, to help us do that. And so Father, we pray that you would bless these rosaries so that whoever takes them, whoever picks them up, uses them to pray for other people, that you would honor those prayers, you'd grant those prayers, and you'd help the person that offers the prayers. And so, Father, we ask this, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So again, um, just to save a little time, uh, they'll be in this basket in the back on the table. Stop. Make sure you pick one up. Okay? Thanks very much for helping.